Journey on a Cloud, a children's book inspired by Marc Chagall, written and illustrated by Veronique Messonot and Elise Mansot. In a lovely corner of the world, there was a little blue town of cheerful houses and flowering hills. This was the place where Zafir, the mailman, was born and raised. The place where he learned his trade, Zafir knew the town like the back of his hand. Every morning he traveled the same route, bringing mail to Flax Street and Cornflower Lane, to Lapas Lazile Avenue and Indigo Arcade, and always ending in Ultra Marine Square. In the evening after work, Zafir liked to gaze out of his attic window. He looked at the sky along the horizon and he saw how the colors changed. He saw the clouds floating by, playing hide and seek with the setting sun or the rising moon. The longer Zafir stared at the clouds, the more he saw them change their shapes. From a giant hen to a cello, from a bearded billy goat to the Eiffel Tower, Zafir wanted to see even more of the sky's wonders, but alas, his house was not tall enough. So he closed his eyes and let his imagination take him flying. The people in the blue town were a practical lot. They preferred to keep their feet on the ground and their minds on their work. Daydreaming for them was out of the question. So even though they liked their young mailman, the townsfolk thought it a bit odd that his head was always in the clouds. Some worried about Zephyr's thoughts of travel. Who would replace Zephyr if he left our village? But others laughed. He's never going to leave. He doesn't have the courage. He's a dreamer. Everyone else is married. He's the only one who's not. The day Zephyr goes traveling will be the day my goats learn to read. The day he gets married, the angels will descend from heaven to earth. One summer evening, Zephyr spotted an unusual cloud. It seemed to dart restlessly from house to house, like a soft white flame flickering over the rooftops of the town. As the cloud came towards Zephyr's attic window, the mailman's heart beat faster and faster. He waved to the cloud as it approached him, anxious to learn its secrets. Hello, Zephyr shouted in greeting. Hello, answered the cloud somewhat breathlessly. What can I do for you? You have traveled all around the world, Zephyr said. What is the most beautiful thing you have seen? That's too hard to say, sighed the cloud. Climb aboard and see for yourself. The mailman felt his body rise up higher and higher. At last he was flying. The people were astounded and they called out from below. What are you doing, Zephyr? Where are you going? I'm traveling to distant lands, he answered. Are you crazy, they replied. You could get killed. There are so many strange people and so many languages you can't speak. Come back here at once. But the cloud had already taken Zephyr away from his blue home. The little mailman was now in full flight and he couldn't believe his eyes. What he saw was even more beautiful than anything in his dreams. Zephyr felt free and happy. His heart swelled with joy like a sail on the wind. Soon he saw below him a village of bright and glowing yellows dried earth, smooth sand, dusty grass, and prickly bushes. What a strange sight for eyes that were used to seeing blue. The people of the village looked up in wonder, amazed at this visitor approaching from the sky. They rushed out of their houses and called out, Imoklu, Imoklu. But the mailman did not understand them, and he didn't know how to answer. All he could give them was his own friendly smile. And then, all at once, a song of welcome could be heard from below, sweeter than honey and more lovely than gold. Night fell. The cloud was soft and cuddly. Zephyr fell asleep. 
Was I slumbering long, he asked when he awoke. Long enough. We've reached a new land, said the cloud. Everything around them was bathed in red. Even the inhabitants had red clothes and cheeks. Having noticed the fair, they waved and called out, Welcome, welcome! Zephyr smiled and climbed down from the cloud. Welcome, traveler, they repeated. Come and sit with us. The red people laughed and spoke a great deal. They gave Zephyr a friendly welcome and offered him many delicious things to eat. Strange dishes filled with red tomatoes and spicy red peppers. Zephyr's mouth felt stuffed with fire and his cheeks glowed as red as the lanterns in the trees. But the friendly villagers knew what could quench his burning mouth. So they gave Zephyr an apple as sweet as sugar. This breeze is growing stronger, called the cloud. It's about to carry me away. Zephyr perched himself atop his floating friend and a gust of wind blew them from the red land. Zephyr's blue cap flew off his head and fell down to the village, a gift to the people who had treated him so well. From far above, Zephyr now saw only a small blue boat merrily bobbing on the waves of the crimson sea. The air was warm, a storm rumbled in the distance. As it sped across the sky, the cloud grew dark and round, filling the humble mailman with fear. Soon the storm was upon them, and it sucked them both in. A giant lightning bolt struck the cloud, who roared out in thunderous anger, and then wept tears of rain. Zephyr lost his hold of his stormy companion, and he fell towards the earth. Though he hadn't realized it, the mailman had been flying over a vast rainforest. Giant trees held out their leaves to break his fall, and they set him gently on the ground. Beneath this roof of plants and trees, Zephyr was safe from the storm, but how dark it was here. Could there be strange and dangerous animals hiding in the shadows? The little mailman felt close to tears. He thought of his small town and of his house on Cornflower Street. And now his cloud was gone. How could he get back home? Suddenly, soft and gentle footsteps approached, and underneath a tamarind tree stood the most beautiful girl Zephyr had ever seen. As their eyes met, something special began to happen. This something was both gentle and strong, so beautiful and powerful that words cannot describe it. The two strangers looked each other in the eye, and the girl slowly reached her hand towards Zephyr, who gently took it in his. And their hearts floated away together. Soon they were both high up in the air, two lovers at the beginning of a new journey. Would their travels last a whole lifetime? Both hoped that they would. When Zephyr returned home with the beautiful girl, a miracle had changed his small town forever. The goats had learned to read, and it seemed as if the angels were planning a celebration. This book was inspired by a painting by Marc Chagall called Bride and Groom with Eiffel Tower. It is an oil on canvas painted between 1938 and 1939. It is displayed as a, at the Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris, France. Who was Marc Chagall? A famous painter who spent most of his life in France. Chagall was born in 1887 to a Jewish community located in Russia. This community is now located in Belarus and is surrounded by many blue lakes. Was he a dreamer? Too much of one. At least that was the belief of Chagall's parents who worked hard to support their nine children. But young Mark had a great dream. He wanted to become a painter. Did he leave home? In 1910, after taking art lessons in his hometown, Chagall continued his studies in Paris. There he got to know many other important artists. Did he travel much? Very much. Chagall traveled through many parts of France, especially the warm southern regions. In 1941, during the Second World War, he had to flee Europe to the United States. After the war, Chagall's work led him to countries around the world, including Germany, the United Kingdom, and Israel. Was he in love? Completely. He painted his wife, Bella, in almost every picture. Why do the figures in his pictures fly? It is said that love gives you wings, and all of Chagall's characters 
Lovers, musicians, clowns, animals seem delighted to exist in their creator's poetic art. The spirit of this art had its roots in the Jewish-Russian culture of Mark's hometown. Were his pictures popular right from the start? Yes, perhaps because they not only told his own story, but also captured the feelings and desires of other people. Chagall's works, paintings, windows, ceramics, and sculptures are exhibited in many countries. In Nice, France, there's a Chagall Museum. The artist's stained glass windows can be seen in churches in France, England, and Germany, in a synagogue in Israel, and in museums in the United States. Chagall even designed giant paintings for opera houses in Paris and New York City.